hello my friends, Joel Powell, Joy and the Lion, and we are still in Nashville, and today I want to do a little bit of a different vlog. It's still relating to Nashville, it's still relating to country music, but this is one of the more unsung heroes of country music, a woman named Sue Brewer. And I recently just found out about her within like the last two or three weeks. I was surfing around YouTube, you should too, and I found a video called Willie Nelson Boar's Nest. It's 32 minutes from a two hour special that they made in, I believe, 1984. It was a dedication to a woman named Sue Brewer, who I'm gonna tell you about today. Days with Jordan the Lion begins now. So Sue Brewer ran a place called the Boar's Nest, and it wasn't a bar, it was an after hours for all the great country musicians of the 60s, and basically once Tootsies would close at midnight, everybody would haul over to Sue's house. They nicknamed it the Boar's Nest, and there the guys would continue to drink, and Sue would not only encourage their music, but tell them in many cases, give me your keys, you ain't leaving here till you sing a song that makes me hurt. Now I tell you about that special because not only is it awesome and you should watch it, but it's pretty much everybody who is anybody in music paying homage to Sue, and she wasn't even a musician. Now I found an address for the Boar's Nest online, since it was her house, I think this is the proper place. It was online, it says it was built in 1954, so that would, that would match up, so let's head over and check it out. And as I understand it, that special that they made was actually filmed in the boar's nest after she passed away. Well, that's unfortunate. It looks like it's gone, because the address was 911. This is 913, and that's 909, which is a recording studio called The Love Shack. So right here where this parking lot is, there's no parking in Nashville, so it doesn't surprise me this turned into a parking lot. This is where the house, the Boar's Nest, would have been. Now Sue wasn't a songwriter, but she was inducted into the Nashville Songwriters Hall of Fame in 1990 as an honorary member because of what she allowed to happen here. Now this was not only an after hours, but it was like for people who were down on their luck, had nowhere to stay, people that she believed in, she let those people stay here. Now, in that special, when you watch it, it's kind of hosted by Waylon Jennings because Waylon was a very, very, very close friend of hers. And I'll tell you a little bit later about things he did um, for her and after her death. But during this special, you see everybody from little Jimmy Dickens, Webb Pierce, and that's actually how you know everyone kind of knew her. She originally worked for Webb Pierce and um, drove around his silver dollar Cadillac around town. And then she worked at nights at the, uh, the Derby Club. And so when Webb Pierce would come here, he would, uh, he would do what she called was the, the Boar's Nest National Anthem. Every time he would come in, she'd say, stand up and do the National Anthem. And you had people on this special like Chris Christopherson, Willie Nelson, uh, Farron Young. Uh, what was the, uh, Dallas Frazier? I mean, there are some George Jones, and, and George Jones also has a, a part in this as well. But like I said, Sue would have these young, up-and-coming uh, musicians who weren't superstars yet. They were just working on things, and she saw the talent in them, and, and they would do songs here, and she'd say, that's a hit, you know? And in fact, that story about Willie Nelson and, um, and Farron Young doing Walls, when Willie wrote Walls and tried to sell it to Farron, he said, this is where they performed it. When Willie brought that song to him and he decided to do it, he first did the song at the Boar's Nest and everybody made fun of it and laughed. And like Farron said, we laughed all the way to the bank. And he said, Willie tried to sell it to me for 500 bucks. And I told him, no, that's gonna be a hit, boy. He said, I'll loan you the money, but I'm not gonna buy that off you. And two weeks later, it was, it was at Tootsie's that I'll take us to, because it'll be in the neighborhood of our vlog. They were at Tootsie's and uh, two weeks later when he got that $20,000 check for the the uh, recording Farron did of Walls coming out, <laughs> Farron said I was sitting in a booth at Tootsie's and all of a sudden this arm comes up around me, grabs grabs me by the mouth and French kisses me. He said, <laughs> best French kiss I ever had. And he said, and we're still close to this day, aren't we? Willie starts laughing. It's some really fantastic performances here, and everybody that performs in this little special has not only some really funny anecdotes about something either Sue had, you know, made them do, like little Jimmy Dickens, I think, was the one that he said, you know, she would take my keys away and say, you ain't leaving here till you make me hurt, till you sing a song that makes me hurt. So, 
a lot of those people got their confidence boosted here songs that maybe wouldn't have ever come out you know like uh like wall she was the one that told fair said that's a hit you got to listen to willie's song and and uh the rest was history. Now, what's interesting is that George Jones ended up opening his own nightclub here in, uh, in Nashville in 1967 called Possum Holler, which was a nickname that he had. Now, what's interesting is that he opened it above where Roy Acuff's museum was and Roy Acuff owned the property, and the only person that George trusted to run it was Sue Brewer. So now let's head over to where Sue worked um, managing George Jones Possum Holler and I'll tell you some funny stories over there and I'll tell you how this was kind of a pretty influential place as well. Now the Boar's Nest may sound familiar to you if you were a Dukes of Hazard fan. Waylon Jennings did the theme song Good Old Boys for Dukes of Hazard, and he was the one that um, wanted them to call Boss Hogg's place in there the Boar's Nest. The Elvis guitar says Lonely Street. We're gonna head on to Music Row and Check out where Possum Holler was, Tootsie's was, and tell you that funny story about why Possum Holler originally closed. Now the reason George Jones opened up down here was because this is where everybody hung out. Tootsie's is that purple bar over there, and then Ernest Tubbs Record Shop is right here, so he actually opened right next to Tootsie's across from Ernest Tubbs. So right over in this building was where Roy Acuff owned uh, the building and had his museum on the ground floor and then up on the top floor over there you get a little closer was where possum holler originally started where sue brewer managed it seriously how cool is that ernest tub record shop that's amazing gotta love it we'll have to go in there a friend of mine was telling me a story about when she was in here one time and roy acuff was showing her around he was in here Let me show you around Legends Corner. That just about says it all. I mean, look at it. From every time period. Look at that. I mean, that's, pretty much everybody knows him. I mean, Willie, Johnny, Taylor Swift, Merle, Reba, Alan Jackson. Dolly. Here's legendary Tootsies. That is so cool to see. I mean, it, it doesn't get any more legendary than that place, really. And now that we've been to the Willie Nelson Museum, you guys have seen some of the original booths inside, and look at all the people that have signed stuff outside. Hank Jr., Merle, Willie, Tanya Tucker, Loretta Lynn, even Kid Rock. So in 1967, Possum Holler opened, and it was a great idea because George Jones was getting more popular, and he had the idea, and it was a smart idea, which was to put his face on different things, like do branding. He was like a forefather to that, and so he realized, hey, I'll have my own club with my own face promoting it, and people will come hang out. And so he, when he wasn't on tour, um, if he felt like it, he would come in here many, many nights and perform, and the nights that he wasn't performing, his band would come and be the backup band for anyone that wanted to perform here. So if you were um, a mu musician coming through and you just wanted to hop up on stage and perform, you had a great band to back you up. Now sadly what happened is, like I mentioned, uh, Roy Acuff was a very, very, very well respected man in this town because not only was he a great musician and um, he co-owned Acuff Rose Publishing Company, which was Hank Williams Publishing Company. They said he was so well respected, he was the only man in town that people called Mr. <laughs> and so um, he, uh, he owned this building and let them move in upstairs and they said he was actually one of the, uh, the number one clients. He was always here and he loved to be here until one day Unfortunately, as you might imagine for any place that's an operating business that's on the second floor, one day they had a sewage problem. And that sewage problem leaked through the floor and down into the Roy Acuff Museum, which, you know, theoretically that's Roy Acuff's problem, isn't it? He owns the building, but 
he decided that day very nonchalantly and very calmly to go and tell the management at George Jones Possum Holler that we got to close the doors and they said but Roy you love this place how can we close the doors and he said I know I love this place but can't afford to have turds floating in my exhibits downstairs so they closed it up and moved around the corner now let me show you inside of Tootsie's there's Tootsie and then there's the smock that we saw in Willie's museum Willie Nelson and friends she was the and friends Wow check it out man look at this place look at the history man it's all faded out up there but yeah Nashville there's always live music look at all those country stars and another bar upstairs look at all that man that is amazing even a third floor let's go check out the third floor look at that Hank Jr. This is awesome. Tootsies. Look, there's Hank. There's Porter Wagner and Dolly. An old picture of Dolly here. And there's Tootsie. And Miss Jessie Coulter. From Willie. Two Tootsie from Merle. Look at this old booth. That's really cool. I'm glad I got to check out a piece of history and include it in this vlog. All right, now we're gonna head off to the cemetery because ironically, George Jones and Sue Brewer are buried right across from each other. And I thought, hey, what a nice connection since she managed Possum Holler. So let's head out. I'm actually recording about four vlogs today and one of the vlogs I just did had a pretty cool reference to Sue Brewer that you'll get to see in the upcoming days. Now, I honestly don't know exactly where they are, but George Jones has one of the most gigantic tombstones plots I've ever seen right up there with Hank Williams so it should be easy to find that at least and he has a whole museum here in Nashville too but we're not gonna hit it this trip I'll just save the surprise that's not gonna happen this time we just ran out of time here he is look at that gigantic one in there we'll pull over Now there's George Jones' grave, and I believe that Sue must be over here. I'll have to look around for her because her son now runs a Facebook page dedicated to the memory of the Boar's Nest, and he posted a picture that I found, and uh, he said, here's mom's grave right across from George Jones. Now here is Johnny Paycheck. And then, the possum George Jones he stopped loving her today a lot of people were soured on him by uh, by his life with Tammy Wynette I, I always hear people mention that but that wasn't the really the George Jones that I knew I just knew him from singing with Willie I gotta get drunk that was a Willie song but they did a duet of it if you've never heard it it's a great song Gotta get drunk, sure regret it, cause I know just what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna spend my money calling everybody, honey. Wind up singing the blues. I spent my whole paycheck on some old wreck. Brother, I can name you a few. It's <laughs> a good one. Gotta get drunk, sure do regret it, cause I know just what I'm gonna do. The possum. And he gave Sue a job, or Sue worked for him because he she was the only one that he could trust. Just thought since we were over here, we should take a look at this. Now let's go find Sue. King of Broken Hearts, he sang of life's hardships and struggles in a way that somehow lightened our own. His voice was effortless and unforgettable. He brought unsurpassed emotion, eloquence to every song he sang. Walk through this world with me, he sang and we do. So we're looking for Mary Sue Brewer. I have faith we'll find her. 
And this is really kind of a who's who of Nashville Cemetery. Everybody's buried here. Dottie Rambo, little Jimmy Dickens, I actually went and visited him already. Webb Pierce, Red Foley, all those guys. And I'm gonna do a special tiny little vlog because I've already kind of vlogged a little bit of the story before. So along with this one, you'll get a short one if I can find the graves. There you are, Sue. Just like they named the special, the door is always open. So Sue worked for the Music City News for many years here in Nashville and had those nighttime shifts at the Derby Club and that's where they all kind of knew her from. And uh, the door was always open. Everybody could go there. She made it welcoming for everyone. And in fact, later on in her life, she, uh, she used to answer Waylon Jennings fan mail for him. And Waylon never forgot her because when she started having really bad health, I mean, she passed away, look, in 1981, 48 years old, 1933 to 1981. She died at 48 when her health started to deteriorate. She was a single mother and uh, Waylon um, online, it says that he basically gave her a free place to stay and took care of her and her son. And then when she passed, I believe he also paid for the burial and for the uh, headstone. And then it was also um, in Sue's memory that Waylon established a songwriters fund because of how important she was. Um, he had he had started scholarships for I believe Belmont and Vanderbilt here in Nashville. What a great woman. Boar's Nest. Just like Waylon said, every great song in Nashville is written on her floor. And they actually wrote a song about that on Sue's floor. Shel Silverstein was the co-author of that. So I know there were about a billion vlogs I could have done here in Nashville, and I did do quite a few, but some are more important than others. And to me, this one was more fascinating and more important than many others. I think her contribution definitely was worth being remembered and I'm glad that we were able to come out and talk about it. If anyone happens to have that two hour special, the door is always open, I would love to see it. But right now, if you would like to see it yourself, please look up um, Willie Nelson and Friends Boar's Nest and it's hosted by Waylon Jennings. I believe the uh, the person that posted his name, Henri Waymore, so it's kind of easy to remember. And he has about 32 minutes of the video great songs it's filmed in the boar's nest in her place and um yeah thanks to her all those great songs came about thank you sue brewer and the boar's nest thank you everyone for watching we're gonna call it a day have a great night goodbye <laughs>